Hey guys, it's Phil coming at you with another video and I'm sorry I didn't address this topic a little sooner but some of you all know that I still work a full-time job as a mental health and substance use clinician and I originally planned to do a different video for this week but I do want to address this topic and I do want to provide some resolve and motivation to those that are struggling based on the coronavirus and everything that has been going on. But before we get into the topic, I want to share with you all that 24 people passed their exam since my last video which was from 3.6 to 3.18 so ah! It's amazing to hear that when so many people succeed and follow the process and address and assess all of these things that people are struggling with to get the job done. And these are the people right here. So Michelle K, Tanisha A, Jordan A, MT, Melissa M, Christina E, Kate D, Levon P, BC, Tillery R, Brittany L, Avery M S, Karen P, Patricia A, Michaela H, Sarah M, Diane M, Kim C S, Charles W, Teresa S, Lori B, Erica B, Shelby B, and Rachel W. Ah! Congrats to those people. And I know not many people are going to be taking their exams because no one's going to be taking their exams. But if you see this video after the ban is lifted, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com to tell me that you passed and you want to share your experience as well. And if you want to rock with me, the study groups that are coming up are as follows. 322, DSM-5 Children. 329, Research, Program Evaluation, and Program Development. 4-5, Human Developmental Theories. 412, Community Interventions. And if you want information about those study groups, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com. If you want to connect with me on Facebook, the page is Fill in the Gaps. If you want to let, check out my podcast, it's also Fill in the Gaps, and that is on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher, as well as you can check it out on Buzzsprout. If you're interested in individual tutoring, I still am offering individual tutoring to help with practice questions as well as content review. If you want information about that, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com. Comment down below your thoughts about this topic and how it's affected you or what you're taking from the experience. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already, so that's down below. And if you want an email notification, Every time that I upload a video, hit the bell next to it, as well as give this video a thumbs up, which is next to the subscribe button, to let me know that you guys like it and are enjoying the stuff that I'm producing and the energy that I'm bringing out. So, some of y'all may be like, what the heck are you talking about, Phil? And as some of you all know, as of yesterday, the ASWB, which is connected to Pearson View, and Pearson View are the people that proctor the exams the masters in clinical exams are not letting people take their exams until april 16th if not beyond and you're like phil where in the heck did you find that information and i found that information at the following link so let's understand what's going on so effective 318 aswb is not going to be hosting exams and letting people take their exams why because pearson view is the people that are proctoring it and it's suspended until after April 16th. And some of you all may be like, Phil, we already know this, but I do want to provide the result because some of y'all do not know what's going to go on, but it's allowing you to cancel it and is not charging you a fee. And you're like, Phil, but my registration is about to expire and all of these additional things. The ASWB is going to be waiving that $30 fee that you would normally have if you did not cancel within a certain amount of time. So they are going to allow for you to register and take the exam again without having to pay for that additional registration fee. And if you need assistance, send an email at this email provided candidate services at ASWB.org and then include all of the information. So I know some of you already know this, but some of you do not know this. So if you had an exam, Pearson View is likely going to reach out with you and tell you, hey, you need to change your exam based on the fact that we're not letting people take the exam until after April 16th. If your exam is after April 16th, you're in a good boat and you're in a positive field of what it could be looking like at that given moment. So I just wanted to provide that out. But the most important thing and the thing that I love doing the most is providing what the heck should we do about it, Phil? I was preparing to take my exam at this time and doing all of these extra things and I was so excited. I was so fired up and I need something to get myself back going. That's what I'm here for because I was sitting here and the first time that I found out because some of y'all reached out to me and I appreciate y'all for doing that and said, Phil, 
the world is ending because my exam was supposed to be X amount of day or now it's changing all this stuff and I'm here to provide some information and some motivation to get the job done and get yourself back going. And I'm not just here to say like, do whatever works, man. It's this is what we are going to essentially do to change the mindset because some of y'all are like, my life is at stake during this given time and I understand that and that's where we have to make it a conceptualize it and make it seem like it's a blessing in disguise rather than something that's like knocks you right off your rocker so i'm going to provide five different resolve set things that i think could be a ways to change your perspective within that situation and the first one is to reflect on the progress you've made in this time and give yourself credit and i know it's difficult to do this because there's a whole bunch of extracurriculars going on outside of you but sit down and say what was I able to obtain from the X amount of time that I have studied up to this point? I know I'm not taking my exam or can I take it for another month, but what have I gained and what can I do to produce extra results in that next 30 days? You've made progress and it gives you an opportunity to maintain and continue to build on the progress that you've already done. It is a difficult task to say, I tried and put everything into this and I don't know what it's going to look like. But it's not like the information is lost. You still have the ability to operate and progress and you need to give yourself credit for being able to do that and being prepared. And I always tell people, be ready to take the exam whenever, but it's already determined that it's going to be after this X amount of time. And for some of y'all, this is like, man, this is a breath of fresh air. But some of y'all are like, man, I've been grinding. I'm ready to attack this thing. But give yourself credit for being willing and able to and develop that routine to get yourself to that position but know and prepare in your mind that in the next 30 days, I'm taking it. So I'm taking it regardless of this, but I need to start focusing on what I've done, what worked for me, what didn't work for me. And it gives you that extra wiggle room to say, what in further can I do to progress the situation? So that first one was to reflect on what you've done, what worked for you, what didn't work for you, and give yourself credit for being able to reflect on that as well as for what you've done up to this point. It's not lost. All those hours you put into it are still in your noggin. They're still in the routine. Why? Because muscle memory is a thing. Because when you do an activity over and over and over and over and over and over, you did not lose that experience. You're staying with and for that situation and getting that out of what you needed. So stay in that process and say, I've gained X amount, but now in the next 30 days, I am going to dig deeper than I ever have because I know my exam date's coming up. I need to be so ready for that at 416 that I'm going to be hitting it. I'm going to be nailing the grind as hard and as heavy as I possibly can, but giving yourself credit throughout the process and not letting it be a detriment into your situation, but more of a blessing of allowing you to be able to operate and progress in your situation. So having that positive mindset, because positive results and positive energy and all of those things are mixed together. So the more positive thoughts and positive energy you project out, the more likely you'll have positive results. But if this news hits you and you're thinking negative, you're experiencing negative thoughts and feelings, it's going to generate to more negative results because you're going to be more ticked off at the situation and jaded at the situation for when it comes up that you're not going to even want to do it and give it 100% at this given moment. So giving that positive energy and positive thoughts to the situation right now is going to generate in the future more positive results because you're viewing this situation as a positive rather than a negative that can drag you down and tear you down in some way, shape, or form. The second suggestion is to reflect on what would be helpful for you to do in the next 30 days to maintain your progress. And yes, I did not say gain additional progress, but maintain the current progress. Why? Because if at this time you stop practicing and stop studying and stop navigating and doing the things that worked for you in the situation, you're not going to maintain it. And that doesn't mean that you have to grind and repeat everything that you would once did, but what can I do to keep my sword sharp in this given moment? And a couple of suggestions that I provide to people that are taking their exam soon, and I know the exam, you can't take it soon, but in the next 30 days is continue hammering the questions, but don't overload yourself with information or questions because that is going to seem so overwhelming and detrimental and you're going to get exhausted and feel burnt out and your energy levels are just going to dissipate away from you at that given time. So you need to sit down and say, what can I do to keep myself excited, positive, and being able to willing to keep that motivation and train going and putting effort into something that I don't even know when the results are going to come? Because the greatest things in this life come from when you don't know when the end destination is, but you are so dedicated to your craft and improving in some way, shape, or form 
that the result is going to come. And when that result does come, it is so much sweeter than if it's rushed and that you're just putting half butt effort in. Because if you start putting half butt effort in at this given moment and then the exam date comes up, it's going to be like you didn't even prepare at all. So that's what I mean. We're emphasizing on maintain because the things in the energy that you put into practice doesn't make perfection. Practice makes permanent. Because the more things you practice and the more things that you get good at, the more capable and willing that your mind is going to be to retrieve the information from your memory bank and say, I am built for this activity right now. Why? Because I've been doing it and nothing's going to put myself through more things than I put myself through in preparation. So when you walk into the exam, you're more prepared, you're more fired up, and you're like a well-oiled machine and cut and slice necks out so much so that the cops are waiting outside because you're facing a murder charge. You have to be able to maintain what you're currently doing. And some of you guys are like, Phil, I do not know how I can get motivated at this given moment because I had my heart set on it. And that's where the third one suggestion comes in you need to express that frustration and all of the emotions that you have around the situation and if you can look me in the face and say phil i am not changed by this exam change you may be lying to me because at any given moment anything that you go through you're going to have a visceral reaction meaning a physical reaction with inside of yourself as well as an emotional reaction and that emotional reaction may be pissed off i am so frustrated and angry and sad and hurt based on the fact that I did not be able to get this opportunity that I thought I wanted to have at that given time. And it's all right to say that you're mad, you're sad, you're ticked off, you want to tear someone's head off. It's okay because the more you suppress and stuff down and say, this didn't matter to me, I don't even care what's going on at this given time, you are just stripping yourself of the ability to be a human and to grow from this situation. Because in anything in life, you're never going to have the things that happen that are supposed to happen in our minds. We have expectations, and with expectations becomes failed mindsets, because with the expectations, if it doesn't meet as high as we want it to, we're going to be feeling terrible and low and shut down. And if it's lower than we think it is, we may feel okay, but we're always going to think, what if? So some of y'all may be thinking like, what would have happened if I took my exam at this given time? You have to let that reality go and say, what can I do right now? Even though I'm angry, I'm ticked off. Some of y'all are happy. Express that happiness. Don't let other people saying that this was a terrible thing take away from your experience. So you have to sit with yourself and say, what is my perspective of what this situation is and own it. And that may be that you're ticked off. And if you're ticked off, What is under that anger? Because that anger is that secondary emotion of what is actually going on. And if you're angry because you're hurt and you're sad and that this is negatively impacting your situation as well as everyone around you, you need to unpack that and say, what is this extra time allowing me to do? Because some of y'all, if you would have went to the testing sites, you could have been at risk for coronavirus and impacted the people in your life more negatively than it is right now. And think about that. This is actually them trying to make a proactive effort to save other people from being infected from this disease that is tagging and hurting a lot of people indirectly because you don't know that you're passing it sometimes. So somebody that is older, that has a vulnerable and susceptible system is negatively being impacted based on the fact that you wanted to be in a hurry and did not really think of the consequences that could be happening. So this may be actually a blessing. So reflecting on that and saying, This situation didn't happen how I wanted it to, but it end up is going to be how I want it to in the end because I'm still going to walk in, I'm going to succeed, and I'm not going to leave anything on the table that I'm trying to contribute in the situation. So being honest and transparent with yourself about the situation, whether you're angry, sad, happy, and all those things, unloading those emotions are going to help you to be able to become motivated and succeed because you're going to feel heard, you're going to feel validated, and you're you're going to feel less vulnerable because other people are feeling the same way that you are. And again, I think the most vulnerable population in this situation are the people that are actually happy that the exam is being shut down. Why do I say that? Because that's an unpopular opinion. It's very unpopular to say, I'm so happy that I'm not able to do this and a lot of people are being negatively impacted financially, career-wise, etc., but it's okay if you feel that way because you have a different way of thinking and a different mindset and that's okay and we need that information and rhetoric in the situation to have 
different growth points and to support each other in different ways. So if you're feeling unheard at this given time, find some place and community that will have you give a sense of being heard in some way, shape, or form because we all need to be heard and recognized at this given time to help ourselves get to the next level in some way. The fourth suggestion is to take this time to relax and recharge yourself for the next month. And what do you mean? You just told me I have to throttle down, I have to plan, I have to reflect. And what do I mean by relax? I just mean do not beat yourself up or do not get so riled up and stressed in this situation that you take away from your authentic self of who you actually are. So this does not mean that you have to be super hard on yourself. This doesn't mean that you have to like lock yourself into a chamber and say, I need to do all these things now that I have the extra time. Every extra minute needs to be taken up for this purpose. And that's okay to embrace your family because we're all worried about what's about to happen, but we're worried about what's going to happen to the people that we care about without actually giving them the time of day and showing them how much we do care and actually worry and want them to be around in our situations. So at this given moment, we need to embrace our families and friends more than we ever have. That doesn't mean physically. That means reaching out to other people. That means occupying people's different times to make sure that they're okay, that everything's going all right with them, supporting them, whatever that looks like in that given situation, and also recharging yourself and doing things that you would not have otherwise been doing if you would have been grinding in the exam prep. And some of y'all, I get emails almost every single day like, Phil, I feel like I neglected my family. Whether it's I passed or failed is irrelevant. It's I feel that I'm neglecting my family and myself and all of these opportunities. So take this time now that you know that your exam's off the table to do things that you otherwise would not have done or make the adjustments to make your prep more manageable in a self-care time because you just gained an additional month to prepare as well as take care of yourself to make sure that you're in the best possible version for your exam. And I don't mean this lightly like, man, take your foot all the way off the pedal and then you're like a parked car, but go at a pace that is maintainable for you so that way you're not going to wail off and crash your car, but don't do it so that so much so that you lose who you are in this given situation. So what do I mean is start practicing self-care activities that you otherwise mo- might have been neglecting during your prep. What does that look like? That may be talking to a friend. That may be watching that Netflix show that you've been wanting to watch. That may be playing a video game if that's your gig. That may be organizing your house. That may be spending time with your kids. That may be playing in this business that you want to do. That may be a book that you want to read outside of studying that you have been putting off. So you need to prioritize your health and your growth and your stress because the more stressed you are, your immune system is going to be impacted in some way, shape, or form. And then the fifth suggestion is start to view this as a blessing and identify positives of getting out of this situation at any given moment. And what do I mean by that? Start identifying the different positives within your life whether that's your health, whether that's the extra time you get, whether that's how positive you've been, maybe that's how many things that you've done for other people, maybe that's that you have people that are supporting and checking in with you, maybe that's clients that are still showing up, maybe that's you doing additional things in your life that you might not have otherwise done, or it allows you to reflect on your life and say, how blessed I am that I'm able to navigate and have all these different things going on within my situation that I may not have otherwise been able to get done at this given time. And again, the positives are very plentiful, but the negatives are on the forefront and we have to get past having the negatives on that forefront and telling us what we need to do at this given situation. And this is a very, very detrimental situation to some people, but to those people I say, please continue to know that the more faith that you have and the more trust that you have within the situation, the easier it will be to let go and allow for the situation to happen because at the end of the day, what is supposed to happen is always going to happen. We as humans want to make sure that we have as much control in our given situation and this entire virus and this exam being rescheduled has taken that control and we need to admit and say we don't like being out of control but some things are better off not being within our control because they yield better results than if we would have got what we wanted at this given time. And something I always ask people is if you would have gotten the opportunity that that you would have been receiving based on passing this exam, or maybe you don't even know that you would have passed this exam. Let's say that this month is saving you from walking into the exam and actually failing it. Because if you failed this exam, what negative things could come about in your situation? Because I know deep down, some of y'all did not think that you would have actually passed if you would have been able to take the exam sooner than you would have done at, at this moment. So you need to be honest with yourself and reflect with yourself and say, 
what is this actually mean for my situation and how much better off I am for them being able to postpone the things. And trust me, I'm not happy that they're postponing the exams. I had a lot of people that have been repping and rocking with me that wanted to take their exams and get their results. But to those people, I just want you to know, I feel deeply in my heart for y'all, man, because I know what it feels like to pass the exam. I know what it feels like to be anticipatory and want to take it and that dread and be like, ah, and that pent up anger. But every single time that I've been angry in my life based on situations that I didn't think were going to actually be blessings, they end up turning being the best things in my entire life because I was able to learn lessons from them and I'm in a better spot than I've ever been in based on negative things in my life. And that's just to say, like, be blessed to have what you have rather than what you think you should have in your situation. Because at the end of the day, we always will achieve the things that we are supposed to achieve and to conquer the things that we're supposed to conquer at our given time. And to summarize the list for y'all, because some of y'all are like, Bill, you talk too darn much. It is to reflect on the progress you've made and give yourself credit for the things that you've done. The second is to reflect on what would be helpful for you to do in the next 30 days to maintain your progress. And the third is to express the frustration and emotions you may have around the situation. The fourth is to take this time to relax and recharge yourself for the next month. And the fifth is to view this as a blessing and identify positives and more things that you can get out of this situation. And if you've made it to this far in the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it to get a notification as well as know that there's going to be a free question and answer study group this Saturday, 321 at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'll post in another video as well as post on my Facebook page. And again, that's fill in the gaps because I want to hear from you guys. I want to support you guys as much as I possibly can as well as I'm going to be bringing back multiple people that have passed their exams to explain their situations to y'all of how they did it and what they found most helpful in their situation. And again, if you have any questions or need anything from y'all, my email is berda24 at gmail.com. I appreciate you guys more than you ever know. And I wanted to address this for you guys. And if you need anything or want anything from me, just let me know. But take care of you guys yourself. Take care of other people around you and know that we're all in this together. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, guys.